I unearthed two yards of a divine white 100% linen fabric inside a secondhand store and it was priced at $5. I would have otherwise strolled past this place if I had not the feeling of something calling me inside. I found it concealed behind a broken down antique picture frame set on the ground. Now, if you work with linen, you're wholly aware of my fortune. But if you don't, then I'll prize you. At a fabric shop, linen is regularly priced at $20 per yard. So, I thank you, arbitrary force of nature, for this whimsical circumstance. And since, I've been considering turning it into an 18th century shift, like this one. But why a chemise then, oh, I don't know, let's say a 20th century Edwardian linen garden dress? Well, with the excessive nature of Edwardian fashions, two fabrics could never afford it and would have been less than sufficient. So, this 18th century chemise, it is, because two yards is more than enough. The reason why I chose this period is because construction starts to get a little more technical in the sense that there is a few more added pieces to centuries prior. These additional pattern pieces are based on basic structures. It's a square and a triangle and it's the same size for every fitted size. And I am going to give you all those numbers today and you will be able to use these for sizes US 4 through 22. The first measurements that you are going to be taking are going to be your own and we are going to measure for the width and the length and this will develop the front and the back patterns. So take your measuring tape and measure your bust. Take that number and add 7 inches and then write that number down. So now you want to measure for the length and you'll take your measuring tape and sit it here at the neckline just where your neck and your shoulders meet. So in total you'll be adding 4 inches and you write that number down. So now I'm tallying up my numbers to get my total width and total length which are these numbers that I'm circling here and take those numbers over to my working table. You want your salvage end to your left. You always want them running at the center front or at the side seam. And then your torn edge is at the top. Now this is tailor chalk. And this is what tailors use to mark directly onto the fabric. So when it's gone to wash, it removes itself very easily with no marks left on the fabric. Here I'm preparing to cut out my first panel piece. To do this for the width, I'm placing a mark at the torn edge with my total bust measurement. For the length, I'm marking my total neck to knee measurement along the salvage edge. Then clipping at the two marks with my scissors to tear through the fabric at both the width and the length. So now what we're going to do is cut this into two pieces for our front and back. So you're going to find your salvage end and make sure that it's running to your left. So it's got to be running up and down. Remember it's the side seam because this is the width and this is the length. Now we're going to find our perfect center just right in half. So there you are. Grab your scissors. Cut it. So find that cut and pull. And voila! You've got your two perfect pieces. On the front panel, I'm folding it in a perfect half and pressing along the seam to form a crease. Upon opening it, I will draw a lengthwise grain to indicate the center front so that I can work along this line to locate the bust level. I'll do this by measuring 13 inches down from the torn edge and marking it so I can draw a horizontal cross grain there to indicate the bust level. Then, moving down 14 inches from that bust level cross grain and marking it so I can draw another horizontal cross grain for the hip level. So 
So here I've brought in the back panel and I'm repeating the fold to crease method and inserting another lengthwise grain to indicate the center back. I'm aligning it with the front so that I can take the hip level cross grain and run it through the width of the back panel. Then moving up to the back neckline, I will locate three inches down from the torn edge and mark it. Then I will be counting down an additional four and a quarter inches to indicate the back shoulder blade level so I can run a cross grain there. You'll also be nading, I should mention, for your straight pins. Now working with the front panel, I'm placing the lengthwise grain at center front and making sure it's aligned straight up and down, exactly plumb. That's up to the floor and down to the ground. I'm also placing the panel's bust level cross grain at the mannequin's bust level and pinning right at the apex. The bust line must run parallel to the floor. This will guarantee you have a final design that will not pull or tug come wear time. Here, I'm cross marking the shoulder princess seam, shoulder ridge, front armhole, underarm, and where the underarm and side seam meet, at the side seam waist, and side seam at hip level. So now we're going to draw in our neckline. And so this is really up to you. You can just look at it visually and determine where you would like the neckline to fall. Now, the 18th century people <laughs> weren't shy when it came to showing décolletage. <laughs> so let's not be either. Now I'm doing the same with the back, taking the neckline cross mark and placing it at the bottom of the neckline plate, placing the shoulder blade level accurately and this is typically about seven inches down from the neckline and pinning it at perfect parallel to the floor. Now I'm making sure the hip levels are lining up and cross marking all the same spots I did for the front panel. Now to mark the side seams. I'll take my total bust measurement and divide it by four. Then, starting at the center front grain line, I'll move down the hip line and towards the side seams, the amount of inches I got from the sum of the two numbers I divided, and place a cross mark there at the length's edge so I can run a lengthwise side seam. I'll do this for both sides of center front and center back. If I did the math accurately, then it should leave me with a half inch seam allowance. And it does, so I'm good. <laughs> okay, here is the underarm cross mark. I hope you can see that. And we are going to drop an inch. Okay, that's here. We are going to add a half inch out to the seam allowance. So it's going to actually measure up quite nicely to that seam allowance that we've already put in. So now just make a cross mark connecting that. See that? And here's our seam allowance. And here is our new underarm mark. So here is our cross mark for our top of the armhole at the shoulder. This is the center front at mid-level armhole. And here is the cross mark for the bottom of the armhole. Now we are going to take our measuring tool. You want to make sure that this cross mark is at least half, half inch in, okay, away from the seam allowance. Now we are going to take our tool and meet all of these as best we can. And we're gonna draw in the armhole, okay? Now I'll repeat the process for the back armhole. I'll only need to draw in one side of the armhole for front and back because when I go to cut out the fabric, I'll do it on the fold of the center front and back grain lines. Now for the neckline. I'll find the bottom of the neckline at center front chest and draw a cross mark about two inches in width. Then 
I'll find the cross mark at the prince's shoulder level and extend that line down perpendicular to the two inch cross mark I just made. Then I'll fashion the corners of the neckline in my preferred method, which is by eye, and I'll repeat the same for the back neckline using the shoulder blade level as the bottommost part of the neckline. As an alternative, you can fashion the corners of the neckline using a French curve. Now we'll take these panels over to our mannequin and check the drape, making sure that everything is and falls where it should be. measurements, the gusset is 6 by 6. That includes seam allowances, cut 2. For the sleeve, beginning at size 14, the armhole is 14 inches in length. For every size thereafter, you will be adding a quarter inch. For the underarm length, this begins at 12 inches for all sizes. Now this is a guideline. You can go longer, but I wouldn't recommend going shorter as you will veer off from historical accuracy. Now the gore is 26 inches in length by 5 inches and this also includes a half inch seam allowance cut 4. Okay so we are going to put the sleeve and the gusset right sides together and sew about a half an inch from each corner so start here stop here and make a back tack and this is the underarm and this here is the armhole edge. So now you're going to flip this out, close it, meet the underarm seams together, open up this corner, now place the gusset right over, and this is how it should look. And now we are going to sew from this point which is where we sewed down the seam. And now we're going to sew all the way across. So now we want to lift it from here because we're going to sew across that seam line again. So we're going to start right where we back tack and go across all the way through. No back tacking here. Back tack. Now we're going to open this up. This is the gusset. This is going to go onto your side seam. It's the underarm. And now we are going to close up the side seam right at the back tack where the gusset and side seam edge meet. We'll close it up and just continue that stitch all the way down. So here is the finished sleeve. I will turn it right side out. So now I'm just giving it a try on before I sew it completely. I'm going to make a couple adjustments to the sleeve. I want it a little bit shorter and I'm also going to take out about two inches in circumference because I want it a little bit more fitted. Um, it just hangs really loosely right now. I'm also going to make some adjustments to the neckline. 18th century chemise was not very modest so I am going to do that just here by eye. Probably start somewhere around here plus seam allowance. So we'll do that and we'll probably go about open this up a little bit. Not much, maybe an inch. Can't even see that, can you? <laughs> so just here. So now with front sides together, this is the front bodice and these are the front gores. We are going to stitch from the bottom along the seam line all the way up to about four inches below the end of the triangle and then back stitch and then continue your stitch all the way up. And we're gonna do that for all four gores. 
And so once we have that done, we are going to be flipping this over and sewing a French hem because that would be historically accurate. realized after machine sewing the sleeve and the neck edge that, well, I did sew from habit. I should have done it using a hand sewing running and back stitch. But rest assured, everything else on this 18th century chemise was sewn by hand. The gores using a French seam and running stitch, the hems of the sleeve and lower edge of the shift using a slip stitch, or a hem stitch as it were during the days of yore. For the neck edge, I used a rolled hem stitch. So, I hope you found the video valuable and it helped you to drape an 18th century shift with historical accuracy. Now go on and take those two yards of linen laid around your sewing room and be transported into the 18th century in a chemise similar to Claire in the Outlander series. Until my next historical project, ever your affectionate friend.